boat vlog. It's boat vlog time. That was the same tune. Uh, V6. Um, repowering my Mercruiser old uh, 140. Yeah, 140. With a um, V6. Now, as you can see here, I have modified a standard sump. I just cut the front off it. Uh, a stand, there is a standard sump around here somewhere. But a standard sump basically... Oops, shit. Sorry. Uh, the standard sump basically just drops down here and to clear the cross member in the car. And um, this is the rear of the motor. So... Um, in a boat that's not going to work because all the oil is basically just going to sit back there and you're not going to get and the pickup was over here so it really wouldn't work at all so uh, I, I bent up the plate um, started welding it I uh, got pretty good results on the first pass then I made a, um, a lug I got pretty good results on the first pass and then started um, then I ground it back and started trying to fix the leaks and I uh, didn't realise that I was running out of gas and so fucked everything up. So now I need to grind it all back, go and get a new bottle of gas and start again. Not start the whole job again, but start trying to repair the um, the holes. So, um, not an alloy welder, but uh, learning a ton about it. With my trusty spool gun. Now, as far as the motor, um, it's a bit of a long story, but the first motor I had, uh, was a very high K's V6 um, out of a VY that had blown the head gaskets. So it had water all through the block and the water had put big holes in the ball holes. Um, so, just, um, hang on a minute, we'll pause. There was obviously an issue with the first block that I got. Um, their heads were good, they just needed planing and, and the valve seats tarting up, we've talked about that. Uh, obviously, with the new sump, I need to uh, make a new pipe that extends back and, and drops into the bottom of the sump, which is fine. That's not a problem. Uh, the crank was good, the crank's good everywhere, uh, there's no problem with that. The crank, now, this is a second block. Uh, a guy advertised it on Gumtree for free if someone would come and get it. So I loaded the, um, the engine crane into the van and zipped down to Mandurah, which is, you know, quite a way. It's still got the white mark for us tensioning it. That's how I do it. Um, but uh, as you can see, the, the, the crank's in, the cam's in, uh, new bearings everywhere. And you can, um, yeah, quite easily turn it by hand, which is perfect, considering that this block had actually grabbed the two center big ends and spun the shells and one of the um, mains and I was really quite worried that one of the mains was going to be a problem like the hole would be out of would be out of around but it, it actually worked out fine so I was extremely lucky there yeah that's all tensioned down and um, and today I'll probably put the uh, pistons in new rings new shells obviously I'm not replacing the bolts on the big ends, but I am replacing the head bolts. I've got a new chain here. I set up the old one. Um, you can't see it, but I, I set up the old one and it is a little bit heavy yarn. It's, it's a bit slack. So um, I, I just bought a new chain. I've got two fairly good tensioners that will do the job without any problems, considering the amount of hours this is gonna do in a boat. It'll last forever. So. Um, yeah, and the bores on this are really good. They're actually, they actually came up beautifully. Uh, let's, see if we, let's see if we can get a look at them. They're standard bores. How's that look? Not great. I'll go around a little bit further. Yeah. The bores are great. I mean, there's one. Where it um, through the big end. It's hard to focus on them, isn't it? You can't really see them, but there's a few um, scratch marks coming up. And, yeah, you can see them there. There's a few scratch marks where the where some of the steel from the um, 
what happens is that when the when the bearings collapse, the steel from the um, the uh, the actual casement of the shell uh, gets thrown up into the bore and puts scratches in the bore. If they're light, it's really not a problem. I've obviously dingle ball honed these. I've got a, a good set of a fairly wide ranging set of uh, um, of uh, bottle brush hones or flex hones as they're known. Uh, yeah. I am running the original cam because that was absolutely perfect. New cam bearings. The standard lifters. Um, I'm willing to, uh, if I've got money later, I will put a new set of lifters in. I don't think it'll be a problem. Even with the old cam, I, I, the cam is so hard and it's just got zero wear on it. The, um, the um, balancer was fine. All the bearings were fine. That's cool, and the you can't see it, but the old um, the water, oh, water pump. This motor, this is the second motor, the free motor that I picked up, had a brand new water pump on it, which is aces, you know. So um, yeah, let me turn it around. I'll move the camera. Actually, that'd be probably a bit easier than maneuvering this thing. Yeah. Yeah, the oil pump. There's a new chain. I've still got to fit that. But uh, all this is just finger tight, so at the moment it's all just mocked up. That isn't, but uh, yeah, this. Um, so I just need to pop that off, pop the new chain on, and, um, and it's done, basically. Timing it is super simple. There's a, a mark here and a dot there, and you line them up, and it's done. It's really simple. Um, there is a little bit more muck in the bore than I would have liked, but I don't want to hot dip it or anything like that because I'm not going to re-bore it so uh, what else yeah, so I've got a new the oil pump in this was spotless the oil pump's driven off here and is in the front cover so I can't really show you that but it, the oil pump that came out of it was unbelievably good and I thought the oil pumps on both motors would be fucked and actually both of them are really good so now, now um, so that's the motor, and like I say, I've got rings, gaskets, brand new rings, brand new gaskets, brand new shells. Um, yeah, everything's ready for that. Basically, once I finish the sump and the pickup, it will be a going concern, pretty much. I mean, and like I say, if, if by the end of it I've got a, an extra 90 bucks or whatever it is for a set of, uh, for a set of lifters, a decent set of lifters, I'll grab them. Um... At the back of the motor, there's not much to know. One of the big problems with the back of the motor... I'll just move the camera once again. Oh, I've got it on a tripod. So the back of the motor is the back of a motor. It's a business end. And um, there's the back of the cam, the back of the balancer shaft there, and, and the crank down there. So there's a, a big aluminium cover that covers all that and mates with the sump surface. Um, once that's on, I can actually probably spin the motor around because um, I won't finish covering the front of the motor because there's a lot of surfaces where I can mount the motor here on these. And I've actually got a lot more uh, work to do on the back of this motor than I do on the front, as in modifications, because basically what I've got to do is... Uh, I struggle to find a, um, hold on just a moment, I'll take you over to that, okay, that's better. I struggled to find a manual flywheel for it, and so I thought, well, it's not that hard to, um, to modify the uh, flex plate. Uh, I'll just get a steel plate cut and bolt it in the three places and then make a spacer and bolt the whole thing on so it's got some weight to it which is fine i've already i got the steel there for a spacer i've got i've got plenty of stuff and the only thing i have to actually do is basically adapt that to it which is no real problem it's got a ring of bolts and it's a very simple setup and it's with this um with this centering boss on it, it's going to be pretty easy to actually do. I can mount this whole thing on the lathe on a mandrel and 
make sure that it's balanced and nice and um, nice and round. I can machine everything on there so that it's round and uh, isn't going to cause balance problems. The actual uh, flex plate itself is balanced, as you can see there. And balance out of the boat is something I'm going to take a lot of uh, care with. Uh, there are ways of balancing motors running. So what I'm going to do is, um, is set this motor up, solve all the electrical, electronic problems I'm going to have, because I'm going to have to probably unlock the ECM and set it up for a boat and make a casement for it so it doesn't get wet and elongate wiring and basically simplify it terribly so that I've got basically just an on and off switch, you know, that sort of thing, a key switch of some kind without the remote to switch it on and off because that, if, if I've got one remote key and it falls in the fucking water, I mean, I'm going to be stranded. So all I want is a, a key switch that I can switch on and off basically uh, without any or ring antenna or any of that rubbish. So. So that's going to be the back of the motor. And what you're aiming for is for all this to be mounted on here, for it to be mounted on the motor, and then for this, which is the back mount, for that to sit about there, exactly like it is there in the back mount. All right, nice and central. So what it's going to be is, like I say, I'll turn the motor around on the stand so they can work exclusively on the back and possibly before I do that <laughs> that upright that you see is by a longer piece of that because I'm over six foot and anything I do this, this motor is literally at like my cross, crotch level and everything I do to it I've got to bend over so I'm actually going to extend that motor stand right up so that I can work on it a bit easier and see what I'm doing um, as for this, I know it has, once it's centralised on the back of the motor, the flywheel fits inside this housing, which is basically empty. Uh, you can't really see it. Oh, yeah, you can. And, um, and it has two big rubber mounts, which are pretty rude. And I'll get another pair of those from Mercruiser. They're not... I've been uh, pleasantly surprised, actually, at the cost of the Mercruiser parts. They're very comparable to motorbike parts. Um, so, what I've actually got to do is, once I've finished making all of the flywheel and all of that, I have to fit all this to the back of the motor and make this sit in the right position. So it's going to be a lot of making mounts and probably a fair bit of aluminium welding and things like that. It doesn't have to be super strong. It doesn't have to be super strong. It just has to be rubber mounted in there and not shaking around to the point where it's you know, going to rip the boat apart because it's an old fiberglass boat. So, But the way that it transfers power, the way that boats tend to transfer power, you know, as long as it's mounted fairly uh, rigidly... Um, well, as long as this plate is mounted fairly rigidly to the motor and we've got a bit of strength to that, I don't think it's going to be a real big problem. Um, other than that, I mean, I can't see a lot of problems with it, but, um, yeah, I've still got to do that, job. So, But fairly soon the motor will be buttoned up and I'll be able to start actually doing that. So. Um, I do have my other motor as a dummy motor to do that on, so hopefully at some point we'll... I'll go over to the engine machinist and grab that because I left that over there and uh, bolt the dummy heads on because I've got to, I've still got to make all of the um, all of the exhaust manifolds and so but I've got just about everything to do that actually. and there's this this is a heat exchanger out of a four cylinder Cummins diesel possibly a six very big heat exchanger but um, the really good news with this heat exchanger is it is uh, not leaking. It's in pretty good nick, actually. It's, it's, it's undamaged in any way. Um, the housing, there's a, there was a, 
The way this one worked is these went on, these two caps, these two big bra, cast brass caps, went onto a um, went onto a giant housing that, which had a header tank on it and outlets for all sorts of things. Obviously, too bulky to put next to the motor in in the engine compartment of the uh, of the of the of the Thunderbird, but I'm still going to use it. Uh, I'm going to make a new basically a new body with obviously two fittings fitting an in and out maybe one on either side one coming out here one going in there something like that it's it's actually yeah that's the only thing i really need to do is the the salt water actually goes through these and the way it's set up is, is, is a bit interesting it's you see how this um you can't see it but this section is uh, split in half. So <clears throat> what actually happens is the water comes in here, I think. It goes up one side of the cooler and then comes back down the other side because in here there's a gasket that separates the two halves. There's a rubber seal that separates the two halves. So it's actually quite a clever design. It's not just in here, out there, many in here and then running along and out there. It's it, it's um it's sort of double acting, which is fantastic. So I've got and I've got enough outlets here to run. I've got it. Sorry. There's the um housing for the heat exchanger. You can't really see it very well. Oh, it's a Cummins diesel one, made in England. Uh, and that those end caps sort of fitted to these. It's good because it has its own header tank. But what I'm going to do is just when I make when I make the um, the new housing, I'm just going to put a a pipe running up and uh, and mount a header tank on the top of that with some rubber hose. Basically, I can get plenty of header tank. And um, in summing up, it's uh, I've got a ton of work to do, <laughs> but um, I never planned to uh, put it in this summer or winter uh it'll be probably another year the little 140 that's in it is um is running it's got a little end knock and it had it when i got it and it, at the speed we're running it out in the river i'm not bothered because we're just using it for river pleasure cruising at the moment it just knocks a line just sounds like a diesel basically so I'm going to keep that running until it shits itself. And the day it shits itself, I'll fucking back the boat in, rip the fucking thing out with the engine crane and, and start work on mounting this. But like I say, I've got a dummy motor now that I can sort of strip all the guts out of and um, start mounting parts on them, welding them and that sort of stuff. And even building engine mounts and stuff like that to put it in a boat and aligning it and building all the engine mounts that have to go on the boat and um, and mounting everything. And then once that's done, I can just rip it out, put the good motor in, and it'll be done, you know? So a dummy motor, yeah, I didn't start out with that plan, but it's turned into a pretty good idea because I can weld it all over it and, and make all my mistakes on that and then then get it right on the, um, on the rebuilt motor. So. But the rebuilt motor, yeah... I, at the moment, that's my main sort of thing. It's just doing the rebuilt motor and trying to make things work that are going to be, uh, you know, that are going to be good, basically. They're going to work on that. Okay, see ya.